All right, guys, today's the day that we're putting the heart of the beast back in. That's right, we're putting the engine, transmission, and transfer case back into the Ram Charger. Now, some stuff has happened behind the scenes that I didn't film that do include getting a new set of wheels and tires. So shout out to my friend, Alex Whitelaw, TSW Off-Road, hooked us up with a sweet set of wheels. There are 12, there are 15s by 12 on 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler tires. Uh, we got those installed and shortly after that, dad went ahead and lifted the back of the ramp charger. And now this thing is insane. It is freaking huge. He had to take one of the arms off the garage door for it to even fit inside. I'm looking at it right now and uh, <laughs> it looks crazy. Let me show you. All right, as you can see, it looks like it's touching the top of the garage door there. Um, but these are the wheels and tires. Shout out to Alex again. And the rear lift is done. Now, if you guys don't know, you do have to drop the gas tank in order to put the rear suspension kit on. Uh, Dad mentioned the other day, we're just gonna go ahead and do the fuel pump since it's already out. But right now, we're working on putting back together the transfer case, the transmission, we need the brace on the bottom, and then we're gonna start marrying all these three things up to put it in the tank. <laughs> to go ahead and lift up the back end. So we've got the uh, transfer case, everything's bolted up. Uh, I'm gonna have to find a clip of what this looked like when we first started, because this is a night and day difference and this is just the drivetrain. How do you feel? Um, feel pretty good. You know what's exciting for me, Dad? What's that? Throwing away all those little sandwich bags. I said, this bolt, that bolt. That was, um, that felt really good. Yeah, definitely. We got a few more here. We got a few more. Trans brace. So this bag will be gone here in a second. A couple more bolts. Yeah, it felt good throwing those bags away knowing that we're making progress. So, yeah, last thing to do is stick this thing in. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. It's been like three weeks since we put the engine and transmission in the Ram Charger. Now, we did put the uh, 33s and it looked really good, it looked good, but there was one thing that looked off and that's that the Ram Charger is so damn big that the 33s look small. Now that brings up another problem that I've been having and that's that my Jeep CJ7 had 35s, but it's a smaller vehicle. So basically I felt like it's been struggling to get up to speed. Well, I haven't felt like it has been, and that's been a problem. So basically fifth gear is pretty much null and void. The Jeep is just out of gear. And I've been thinking about how do I get this thing to drive better? And I don't really want to go down in tire sizes, but we just hit a lick and put these 33s on the Ram Charger. But then I felt like those were small. So the obvious thing to do was switch them out. So that's what I just did. I put the 35s from the CJ on the Ram Charger and I put the 33s from the Ram Charger on the CJ. Now, something else that's important to note is that the chrome wheels, the Krager Nomad 2s that were on the CJ7, those were actually 15 by 10. These wheels that I got from my homeboy, Alex Whitelaw, TSW Off-Road, uh, they're actually 15 by 12. So it gives it a much wider, meatier look as well. But what I'm really going for is can the Jeep uh, run and drive better? Basically, will I be able to use fifth gear? All right, so aside from swapping wheels and tires between vehicles, which is a lot of work, by the way, um, small things, distributor, um, not distributor. I'm tired, guys, I'm so sorry. But yeah, that, that lightning maker right there, we got that thing in there. Also got some of the computer modules already put up on the firewall, starting to work on the firewall. I started messing with the headers. And as you can see, we got the driver side in seated nice. Starter had to come out. Um, didn't forward plan on that one, so we had to take the starter back out. Started routing the wires for the starter, all that good stuff. So trying to get this thing fired up sooner than later. All right, guys, the last thing that ate our lunch was the fuel tank. So basically, if you're looking at any vehicle that's been sitting for 15 to 20 years, at some point you got to deal with the fuel system or the fuel tank lucky for us the fuel tank on the ram charger is plastic but when we pulled out the level sending unit and we looked inside it was a nightmare all right and just to show you here in my adventure is closet here of parts 
Here's the fuel tank. As you can see, it's plastic and we got it sealed off. I'm gonna tell you exactly how we cleaned it. And it was thanks to YouTubers making videos on how to clean plastic fuel tanks that have been sitting for decades. So the first thing we tried doing was going in there like manually and scooping out all the gunk that was inside. Then we realized that wasn't it. Took two gallons of acetone, filled this thing up, and then we took an old chain, well not an old chain, but a chain, a chain link chain, we threw it in there and you just swash it back and forth, back and forth after letting it sit for a couple of days. And then we put that back into the acetone containers so we could dispose of it properly. So underneath here, there's still some work that needs to be done. Sorry, it's so dark, but we're pretty much undercoating what we can and cleaning what we can. You'll notice that the axle is painted and the straps are also undercoated finally. Um, but you'll see the brakes aren't. That's because we do still have to work on those axles. We want to open them up, do axle seals, do bearings, all that good stuff. Fill it up with fresh fluid before we get rocking and rolling. But like I said, we have been cleaning. All that was full of dirt. Same up here. Cleaned it all out, wire wheeled it, and then hit it with undercoat. So we still have to go up in here, which is a little more difficult. But once that's done, we'll hit everything with undercoat and it'll be A-OK. -okay. And just for giggles, if you can't tell how big this thing is, Man, it looks so much better with 35s, in my opinion. That looks, I love that a lot more. But just to give you an idea of how big it is, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's cutting it real close right there. But also just like another inch and a half or two inches because of the skates right there. But yeah, that's where the Ram Charger is at. We've got some pretty neat parts. If you're new to the channel, we do have the sport rear bumper, sport front bumper, and bird bath hood. I know it's not period correct, but these things look absolutely sick with those pieces on there. Also, before I forget, these are Headman headers, if anybody is wondering, for Mopar 318 uh, engine. And the rest of the exhaust will actually be done by my friend at AM Exhaust. Make it loud. On Instagram, we're going to do a high clearance exhaust on this thing. So when we do go wheeling, we don't have any issues. And I'm going to show you why that's actually really important because I didn't plan that with the CJ. Basically, when the suspension starts flexing, and this was with the um, 35s on there, it started rubbing the exhaust right there. And you can see it started going through the header wrap. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video because my mama's cooking. My wife is helping my mama cook. My dad's relaxing. My son's playing with some toys in the back. So if you like these videos, got Miss Rachel in the back, you hear her? <laughs> so if you like these videos, hit that like button, leave a comment below. Until next time, peace out.